Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video on my channel, Hair Licious. If you guys are new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe so that you guys are updated on hair loss and hair transplant content, as well as updates on current hair loss treatments in the pipeline. So it's actually been quite some time since I've last posted a video on my channel. I think it's been like three to four months since my last video. And I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but I just needed to focus on other aspects in my life and just go on a hiatus before coming back producing more content. A lot of that time has been going towards my full-time job. Uh, if you guys didn't know, YouTube is not my full-time job. And just like most people, I do work a eight to five gig with the federal government. Also, I've been spending a lot more time with family and friends, um, just going on some vacation. And honestly speaking, I was just kind of burnt out from talking about hair loss and hair transplants for the past few years. But I am happy to say that I am back as there's been a lot of exciting updates that I have been following and wanting to keep you guys in the loops on. In a separate video, I will also give you an update on my hair loss treatment regimen and also do a detailed video on how my two hair transplants that I got at Motion Clinic is holding up. It's already been seven years since my first hair transplant and over four years since my second hair transplant. So I feel that it's time for another update and there are some things that I wanted to talk about on, you know, kind of like how my perspective has changed on my two hair transplants. Also give you guys the pros and cons. But with that said, in today's video, I wanted to give you an update regarding a very promising treatment that I have really high hopes for, both in terms of efficacy and also for commercialization. And this is gonna be Kintor's KX826, also known as pyrolutamide. Back in March of this year, Kentor had completed their enrollment of over 700 subjects in China, and they had finally begun their phase three clinical trials of pyrolutamide to test for efficacy and safety. Primary endpoint for the clinical trial is to change from baseline and non vellus target area hair counts after 24 weeks of treatment in comparison to placebo. And for your information, this is the first androgen receptor antagonist to enter phase three clinical trials in the world. Right behind pyrolutamide is gonna be Brizula, also known as Clascoterone, which they have also begun their phase three clinical trials, but expected to be complete sometime in 2025. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Brizula, but we will see how it performs once we get phase three clinical trial results. And also speaking of anti-androgens, there's a lot of people who are currently on RU584, but the thing is, RU's binding affinity for the AR is on par, if not greater than that of testosterone, but pyrolutamide has an even higher binding affinity than DHT for the AR. So this alone puts pyrolutamide as a far more effective treatment as an antiandrogen, as it is going to outcompete DHT completely. And to kind of give you guys a quick perspective, pyrolutamide binds to the AR with a very high affinity with an IC50 of 0.28 nanomolar. And this measures a drug's efficacy. And the lower this number is, the more potent it's gonna be. Whereas something like bicolutamide has an IC50 of 3.1, RU has an IC50 of 1.1. So basically, you know, pyrolutamide has about four times stronger than that of RU in terms of binding affinity for the AR. So if you are using a if you are using RU and haven't seen any improvement, switching over to something like pyrolutamide is going to be more than likely to be far more effective. Now, Kintor has also begun their long-term safety phase three clinical trial in China in April 2023 with 270 male and female androgenic alopecia patients with a treatment period of 52 weeks to evaluate the long-term safety of pyrolutamide. We should be getting an update on that sometime mid next year in 2024. And I really don't speculate anything major only because prior trials didn't show any crazy adverse side effects. And you know, the most common side effect was actually contact dermatitis. But you know, it is a good thing to conduct these so-called long-term safety trials to make sure that it doesn't pose any harm when it is used long-term. So this also means that with phase three clinical trial lasting 24 weeks, plus the one year of phase three safety testing, this has pushed back for a potential earlier commercialization, but Kentor plans to hopefully release top line data from his phase three clinical trial in China in quarter four of 2023 and potentially follow with a new drug application. Kentor by far is one of my most favorite hair loss treatment companies because they've been very you know, responsive with their clinical trials and updates. And they've also been very good with meeting their research endpoints compared to most other, you know, pharmaceutical or biotech companies that are currently researching hair loss. 
And Kintor, in my opinion, is very different from the other, other hair loss companies that we've, you know, we've actually seen. They haven't run into any financial issues throughout their multiple clinical trials in China or even in the US. They're not you know, taking any shortcuts with product safety and efficacy testing. And most importantly, I feel that they've been very transparent with most, if not all of the research findings. And on top of that, their phase two clinical trial showed a 22 hair per centimeter squared increase in non vellus hair count compared to baseline when using 0.5% concentration of pyrolutamide twice a day, which would easily make it comparable to past studies of oral finasteride without the associated you know, known side effects of finasteride in some users. Also, let's not forget that this treatment works in a different mechanism of action, which means that if you were to pair up pyrolutamide with something like you know, finasteride or tetasteride and topical or oral minoxidil, you very likely get better results as the treatments would be working synergistically. If everything goes well, you get all the green lights from phase three clinical trial, uh, we're potentially looking at a commercialization towards the end of 2024 to early 2025, given that the long-term safety testing will be complete sometime in April 2024. So this is very exciting to say the least. And right behind pyrolutamide, we also have GT20029, which I've talked about a few times. This is their antigen receptor degrader, which degrades the AR protein. GT20029 completed their patient enrollment for phase two clinical trials for male uh, pattern hair loss in China as of August 2023, which evaluates the efficacy and safety and expect to release top line data for the phase two clinical trial sometime in the first quarter of 2024. So, you know, this is another treatment that's on the top of my list. I'm very excited to see its efficacy from phase two clinical trials. From what we know so far, it should be far more effective and efficient than pyrolutamide in terms of efficacy and likely needs to be dosed, um, you know, very infrequently compared to pyrolutamide. So, you know, Kintor has been very impressive with a huge arsenal of hair loss treatments that are currently undergoing phase two and phase three clinical trials in the US and also in China. And, you know, I really look forward to the next few months on their updates regarding completion of phase three results in pyrolutamide and also for uh, GT20029. I think there's a lot of good potential with these treatments, whether you use them synergistically with contemporary treatments, or if you're looking to get on a treatment with something other than finasteride or tetasteride that can come, you know, with obvious, you know, obviously uh, some of the side effects that can alter the hormonal profile. Both drugs didn't cause any notable side effects or systemic accumulation. And I really believe that there's a lot of people um, that are going to benefit from using Kintor's treatments. But that's all I have for today's video, guys. It's been, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I'll definitely be back with more content. As always, thanks for all of your support. I will be doing another update on Kintor as soon as I um, get an answer from them on phase three results. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Take care, guys.